What's good, fam? This is Pastor G, and it is playoff season. You know, I think about how many times uh, we've been at that clutch moment of a game where the score is close, the game is close, the offense has gotten their team uh, down into field goal range. If this thing goes up between the uprights, the game is won. So special teams comes onto the field and the ball is snapped to the holder and the kicker comes through and it's wide right. It's no good. And then after that, how many times can you remember somebody saying you had one job? That's it. One job. Well, Today, we're going to take a look in the book of Exodus, and we're going to learn a valuable lesson from some courageous ladies, and we're going to talk about you have one job coming up next on The Trifle Ones. All right, so we're going to be reading from Exodus chapter 1, verses 15 through 21. So we got a few verses to get through today. Verse 15 says, The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, whose names were Shifra and Pua, When you were helping the Hebrew women during childbirth on the delivery stool, if you see that the baby is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, let her live. The midwives, however, feared God and did not do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. They let the boys live. Then the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and asked them, Why have you done this? Why have you let the boys live? The midwives answered Pharaoh, Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. They are vigorous. And give birth before the midwives arrive. So God was kind to the midwives. And the people increased and became even more numerous. And because the midwives feared God. He gave them families of their own. So what we're seeing here is in Exodus chapter 1. Um, Some time has gone by. Initially, we find out in chapter one that Joseph um, served under Pharaoh. He was number two in command and he had saved Egypt uh, from a famine. But time had elapsed. Time had gone by. And the new Pharaoh didn't know about the history, didn't understand what Joseph had done. But he knew that there were some people, the Hebrews, who were not Egyptians. And he looked out and he said, you know what, they're they're getting kind of plentiful out there. There's a whole lot of them. And I think that we may need to control their numbers. And so he tells the midwives, when you go in to assist in giving birth, kill the boys, let the girls live. And so he actually commissions genocide by ordering these women to kill all the male babies While they're delivering the children. Now there are two things. That I want to talk about really quickly today. And the first is that. Society demands. That we neglect our purpose. Society demands. That we neglect our purpose. I'm going to read verses 15 and 16 again. It says the king of Egypt. Said to the Hebrew midwives. Whose names were Shifra and Pua. When you were helping the Hebrew women during childbirth on the delivery stool, if you see that the baby is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, let her live. It's important to note that these women, these midwives, they weren't leaders. They weren't prophetesses like Miriam, the sister of Moses, or a judge like Deborah, who led Barak into battle. They weren't a queen like Esther. Um, They were midwives and their job was real simple. They had one job and that was to deliver Hebrew babies. The word 
midwife. In Hebrew is Yalad, which means to bring forth as it relates to life. So they had one job, which was to bring forth life. And Pharaoh demands that they take the lives of the boys, which means that he's demanding them to do something that's the complete opposite to what their purpose is. And it's funny because society demands the same of us. We're educators, law enforcement officers, we're accountants and we're attorneys. We work in car washes and, you know, retail stores. We own businesses and the list goes on. And yet in the mundane things in life, uh, we're called to bring forth life into others. Our employment, our professions, our occupations, our education, if we're in college or in school, uh, it's all fertile ground to bring life where others are struggling and dying on the inside. So the question becomes, do you view what you do as a place for ministry? Do you view coworkers or supervisors or clients or customers or any individual that you come into contact with? Do you view them as somebody who could potentially be ministered to? Now, don't get me wrong. I, I'm not that dude. Like, I'm not that, you know, preaching over folks and hitting people over the head with the Bible. You know, I'm not that dude that's quoting scripture all day and have my nose up in the air looking down at people. That, that's not what I do. And that's not what I suggest that you do either. But what you can do is be compassionate and, and thoughtful and reassuring and encouraging respectful and giving. You can be sensitive to the needs and plights of others in everything that we do. See, that's a lost art form in this day and age because everybody's trying to be pro provocative and everybody's trying to be offensive and nobody cares what anybody else feels or thinks or what have you. And nah, we shouldn't be controlled by the people. However, we should be concerned with how we impact other people. You know, that includes stuff that's just as simple as driving. You know, we can't just be driving all crazy and throwing our middle finger up at people and then expect that people respect us when we say that we're people of faith. You know, it's it's um it's pretty sad right now because you know, folks throw the word Christian around so much and then they do a piss poor job of walking that thing and living that thing to the point where there are so many people who don't even want to use the term Christian to describe themselves because they're ashamed of what people are putting out there. But some of us volunteer at homeless shelters and we volunteer to read in schools and we execute street cleanups and, and things like that. But then we forget about those who work in the trenches with us. We forget about those who work with us on a daily basis. Our call is to live our creed, to live in such a way that everyone can see that there's a light shining brightly within us. But society, however, wants us to ignore that daily walk. Society demands that we neglect our purpose. But, and this is the second point, the Savior determines that we nurture people. Verses 17 and 20 and 21 say this. 17 says, The midwives, however, feared God, and did not do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. They let the boys live. Verse 20 then says, So God was kind to the midwives, and the people increased and became even more numerous. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families of their own. So the midwives, at the risk of losing their own lives, ignored the decree that came from Pharaoh. In order to continue bringing forth life, in order to nurture people, 
in order to do their one job. They feared God and they, in their purpose, decided that they were going to serve God. Pause and consider whose life can you enrich today? Who can you nurture, mentor, love on, or show some love to? Pick up the phone and call somebody that you know has had challenges. Think right now, who do you know is going through it that's catching some kind of hell out there? Maybe they lost their job or they lost a loved one. You know, everybody's around when the the death first happens and they're around during the funeral. But but choose somebody who's like six months in because everybody else has gone back to their normal lives. And that person is still struggling. They haven't gone back to their regular life. Reach out to somebody that you know is dealing with an addiction without any judgment. Check on them. You doing all right? Write a letter to somebody that you know is incarcerated, somebody that's been forgotten about. They're doing their time. But man, it would be nice to get a postcard in the mail that just says, yo, I'm thinking of you. Remind someone that they're special and loved. Text somebody to say, hey, you crossed my mind. You good? Now, I ain't talking about somebody you're trying to be booed up with talking about W.I.D., what you doing? I am not talking about that. But call somebody that you know who lives alone. Zell somebody $20 or cash app them $20 out to clear blue sky and just say lunch is on me today. This world and the people in it will suck us dry and have us on the defense because of all the offensive things that are happening. But we need some folks to be about nurturing those who are around us. You know, I remember I was in the laundromat not too long ago. Yeah, we have our own washer and dryer at the crib, but I was washing a comforter. It was too big for our washing machine and for our dryer. So I went to the laundromat to wash the comforter. And there was a, must have been about four or five year old boy there. And he said hi to me. And when he said hi, I said hi back to him. And I put my fist out so he can give me a fist bump. And he did that. He was with his mother. And this little boy proceeded to talk to me nonstop for the next 38 minutes. But then at the end, when it was time for them to leave, they were heading towards the door. And she said, are you going to say bye to your new friend? And he said, yes. And he ran over to me full speed and wrapped his arms around my knees and hugged my knees like I was his best friend in the world. And all I could do was reach down and hug him back. And in that moment, in that laundromat, I had one job. And that hug let me know that I had done it well. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you asking you that you would help us to be sensitive to our role within the lives of others. I ask that you would show us new mission fields on a daily basis, that we become sensitive to when someone is in a bad place or in a dark place. Help us to to think about the right person at the right time so that we can reach out to them in the right way to let them know that you still love them. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would reciprocate and do the same things for us when we're going through. We ask that somebody would think about us and, and, and decide that they want to nurture us. Use this message today for whomever is listening So that they will take up the challenge and reach out and love on someone else. All these things we ask in your son and our savior, Jesus Christ's name. And all of the trifling ones said, Amen.